Welcome back. It's time for everyone's favorite sports debate here on Midco SN head to head brought to you by Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. A quick rundown of the rules. We put two Midco personalities against each other. I ask up to five questions. They each have 30 seconds to prove their point. I decide who proved their point best and I pick a winner. The first person to win three debates on the day is today's champion and today we continue the playoffs with our final play in game. So a lot is at stake guys going at it with a season on the line. We have Alex Heinert from Grand Forks going get up against Jody Norstead in our West Fargo studio. Guys, Jody won the coin flip. Alex actually gets to go first today. Are you both ready? Yes, <laughs> let's do it. All right, so this first question, I'm really interested to hear your thoughts on this, but which second round FCS playoff matchup is most likely to result in an upset, Alex? Good question, Carla. I mean, the last couple of years, three seeded teams have lost in the second round. I think at least three go down this weekend. The biggest of those upsets is going to be in Jacksonville, Alabama. Kennesaw State is one of the hottest teams in the FCS right now. They're on an 11-game winning streak. They have the best rushing offense in the country, 338 yards per game with their triple option attack. They also lead the nation in turnover margin, plus 33. And even though JSU has got a great run defense and is traditionally a good playoff school, these two schools are only 87 miles apart a ton of Kennesaw fans are going to travel it's going to be a great atmosphere and I think KSU is going to get the win all right Jody who does Kennesaw State even play in the regular season though I think you got to go with one of these Missouri Valley or Big Sky teams and I'm looking at that Big Sky matchup it is it would be technically an upset even though it'd be the eight seed at Southern Utah going down but I think Weber State pulls that win off if you go back in six out of the last seven years the road team has won this game between these two teams. And if you look back in the regular season, Southern Utah did beat Weber State 32 to 16. Weber State didn't have its quarterback for most of that game. He was injured early in the second quarter. That would have changed everything. I think Weber State pulls off the victory at Southern Utah. Right. I, think you're, I think you're right. Sorry, Carla. I think you're right, but I don't think that's really an upset. They were both were nine and two teams, co-champs of the big sky. I, I just Still don't know if you really count that. So they're a seeded team, I'd give you that. Mm. I could say that the number one team, <laughs> number one seed's going to lose, but I don't think it's really going to happen. I don't think Kennesaw State's going to win. All right. Both very valid points. Southern Utah did beat uh, Weber State earlier this season. It is hard to beat a team twice in one year, but I do, Alex, I think you're playing to the triple option here with Kennesaw State. They're actually just uh, th the third in their third year as a program. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it, they're kind of new to the playoffs, so I think that bids well for them. So I'm going to go with the Kennesaw State upset. So point for Alex. Go Owls. It's that Go Georgia Owls Southern triple option thing that you guys have going <laughs> triple on, Triple option, right? it, it throws playoff teams off. <laughs> Not a lot of teams in the Ohio Valley are running the triple option. I think that's right. going to help. Going to yeah, help this for, weekend. For sure. All right, question two. We're moving on to UND Hockey. Cam Johnson is set to return in goal for UND Hockey this weekend after missing the last eight games. Is he the team's most important player? I think he's certainly one of them. I, I, would, I don't know if I'd say he is the most important player, though, because they just haven't been able to get things going offensively either. So I don't think he can put it all on the goaltender spot right now. Austin Pagansky, I think, is one of those guys that you look to. He's, a, he's the captain of this team. He has to go out there and be a leader. I mean, the last two years, he had 12 goals in, in, as a junior, 10 goals as a sophomore. Right now, he's sitting at two goals and two assists. Uh, captain of the team hasn't scored a goal since November 3rd, so he needs to get things going, and he hasn't had a point in this three-game winless streak that they're on right now. All right, so a no from Jody. Alex? I would agree that it's a no because I don't think any single person on this team is important. This UND team this season is based about depth. It's all about how good this roster as a whole is. And obviously Cam Johnson over the last eight games has, has been a big loss. Peter Tomey, by the way, though, has stepped in and played well. Cam went 5-2-1 and one in the team's opening eight games. Tomey 3-2-3 three, three in his last eight starts with the goals against. That's about a half a goal higher per game this year. But you talk about Pogo, he's only got four points all season. And a guy like Christian Willanen maybe would stand out as the most impactful 13 points leading the team in goals and in points this year front to back. But I think it's the depth. It's the depth of this team. Nobody is better than in each individual. It's the whole, the whole that makes this team so good. <laughs> Jody, any rebuttal at all? I, I think, I, I mean, I just offered up the guy that maybe is the player that they need to improve the most. Uh, I, but yeah, I think we both agree. Cam Johnson, probably not the most important part, but boy, they'll sure be happy to have him back this weekend. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, he had what, he through the first eight 
games they had 11 point allowed 11 points through the last eight games they allowed 14 not a big difference there but I am going to go with Alex again you cover uh, UND hockey and it is the team as a whole and I do feel like whereas in past years for UND hockey there were several players to stand out this year it's kind of like an even field and it is more of a team effort so Alex gets the second point Jody you've got some ground to make up well oh, here it comes <laughs> maybe maybe this one right all right Tiger Woods right now is competing in his first tournament in nine months taking part of the hero world challenge that got underway today woods hasn't won a tournament since 2013 so what's more likely woods retiring in the next five years or woods winning another tournament well first of all neither would surprise me uh, i would say number one Tiger woods one of the greatest players of all time no question about that however over the last four years he's had major back surgery several times and is coming off back fusion surgery they're literally fusing his vertebrae together <laughs> golf is a sport that revolves around torque and and movement with your back and your hips and your arms and all those types of things even though everybody is saying he's playing great he looks good he looks aggressive out there he's hitting so far I just don't know if his body is going to be able to hold up to be able to play the game at a high enough level for four straight days. Could it happen? Yes. I think he's probably more likely to retire than to win another tournament, as okay. sad as that is. So is he back with a good back, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. That's going to be the issue. All right, Jody. Yeah, and, and I think that that's a great point, Alex, that the fusion, I mean, <laughs> literally, it's if it gets damaged again, it's over for Tiger Woods. It, there's nothing more that they can do. So that's why I think... It's going to be the retiring that happens before. Do I think he can be good again? Yeah, I think he can get up there top 15, top 10, and maybe a couple years down the road he just says, okay, I got back to playing kind of the way I wanted to play a little bit, but now I'm ready to just kind of step away from the game and worry about my long-term health. But, yeah, I don't think he can win another tournament uh, just the way that, that everything has happened to him health-wise and just confidence-wise too. Yeah, 79 PGA Tour victories, 14 majors, second most all time in both of those categories. But <laughs> hasn't done much I, since. Your you just you have to play golf consistently to be able to win at major events like this. Could he win on the Senior Tour, which is going to be eligible for in nine years? <laughs> Maybe, but not the PGA Tour anymore. I think it's over for for LT Gray. Yep. Okay. Well. Oh gosh, I, I'm, I'm going to go with Jody for this one, but mainly because I want to get to this next question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the courtesy. And, and I, I mean, I agree. He's, I, you have to see it to believe it if Tiger is actually going to continue on in his journey uh, in the golf world. So let's, Jody gets that point. So it's two to one right now. The next question, it's a draw for this summer's FIFA World Cup and it's, it's tomorrow in Moscow. So even though the U.S. isn't in it, should we care? <laughs> no. No, we shouldn't because we should be more concerned about U.S. soccer and how we fix it because this is a huge disappointment. For the first time since the year I was born, they aren't playing in the FIFA World Cup. And, and that's it for a sport that is always trying to, you know, grab more attention, grab more worldwide attention, especially grab more attention in this country. This is a huge setback because everyone always loves to rally around, oh man, the U.S. is playing in the World Cup. That's when you get those fair weather fans, a lot of those eyeballs on that team. And there's not going to be that option next summer, so that's disappointing. I don't think there's any reason that we as, as Americans should really have to, to watch the World Cup draw when our team isn't playing it. Well, I would say, first of all, you shouldn't have to watch the World Cup, but you should want to, even if the U.S. isn't in it. Yes, I've, I've shed my tears. Everybody knows I have been in pain over this over the last couple of months. But even though the U.S. isn't available in this tournament next year in Moscow, this is still one of the major sporting events in the world. You've got, again, over a billion, a billion with a B, watch the World <laughs> Cup final in 2014 in Brazil. These are the best players in the world. I don't care what you're doing. The best at what they're doing is always fun to watch. You've got some of the best all-time guys and Messi and Ronaldo and guys like that. You've also got so much passion among the fan bases. Even if the U.S. does not have a dog in the fight, pick a fun team. Pick Iceland. Pick, you know, pick, pick somebody else to rally behind. I just think it's in the middle of the summer when nothing else is going on. Get into this. It's something fun to get uh, your summer going from a sporting level. All right. That, it's the number. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Jody. That, that's the feel-good story of it. But the reality is everyone needs to be focused on how can we make U.S. soccer relevant again. I mean, not even making the World Cup. It, it needs to get better. 
Well, I think if you look at some of these, here's the thing. <laughs> this summer provides a great opportunity for people to watch some of the best teams in the world. Germany, for example, was a team that crashed out of the Euros in the second round of the tournament years ago, and they had a total rethink about how they wanted to produce soccer players and they won the World Cup last time out. Here's a chance for the U.S. to look at some of these other countries and say, we want to play like Spain. We want to play like Germany. This summer offers that. Jody, wake up. Wake up, Jody. So, Jody. So, it's, uh, yeah, again, it's the beautiful game. It's the world's game. I think it's worth watching this summer, certainly. Plus, the NBA Finals and the NHL Finals will be done by that time. So you got nothing else to watch. Just saying. <laughs> Alex, you're so passionate about FIFA. I love it. Um, I do think, obviously, soccer is growing in the U.S., but I'm going to agree with Jody here, mainly because I think our audience will probably agree with that. It is growing. There are a lot of people out there that love soccer, but we do need to focus on, use this as a reminder that we've got to get better at soccer, and we've got to take some time uh, to get better and figure out how to improve. So I will give Jody that point, which means that we have to go to question five. This is for all the marbles, as Kelly normally says. It's the last day of November. What was the best Dakota sports moment from this past month? Well, it was a great month for sports in both North and South Dakota, but I'm gonna take you to Sacramento, California. November 18th, it was a Saturday night, Sacramento State, North Dakota Volleyball down two to one in the championship game of the Big Sky Volleyball Tournament. And in intermission, senior Julia Kazarowska, who's blown out her ACL twice, she's given up two ACLs for this team, essentially gives her version of the Al Pacino inches speech from any <laughs> given Sunday, gets the girls fired up, they go out, they rattle off the next two sets, 25-18, 25-15, to beat the top-seeded Hornets and go back to the NCAA tournament. Five seniors, 30 wins on the season. What a great way for that group to at least give themselves another chance to keep playing this year. All right, Jody. That's impressive, and there's plenty of worthy candidates for this. I mean, three, or we had two three-peats in high school volleyball for state championships, and I'm a bread and, my bread and butter is high school sports, but I'm going to go with the Winemere Lidgerwood football team. Connor Barton's dad passed away the Monday before the Dakota Bowl, uh, and he played in the state championship for Winemere Lidgerwood, played a significant role, a senior. The Winemere Lidgerwood goes on to win the state championship convincingly, and he gets to hoist the state championship trophy. He's the first one that goes up and grabs that trophy. An emotional moment, and it's something that I could never even speak to, uh, but witnessing it was something else, and seeing those boys really gravitate around him and wanting to win it for Connor was pretty, pretty special. It's a great story by Jody. I mean, you can't argue with that. Like I said, there were a ton of great moments. I would just say because you gave Jody the courtesy win on the Tiger Woods question, <laughs> you should probably just give me the courtesy win here on number five, oh. and we can move on with our lives. Oh, gosh, I don't even know what to do. The emotional... Plus, Jody's going to win North Dakota Sportscaster of the Year here in a couple months. So oh, yeah. If you want to even it out a little bit by... This is so <laughs> tough. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh gosh. I'm... I'm going to go with Alex just because I did give the courtesy <laughs> win, but great story. Got chills, uh, Jody, when you were given your answer for yeah, question it, number five. A great, a great moment for, for, that, for that kid and for that family, for sure. And this might be the, a, a great North Dakota moment, Alex winning. <laughs> Alex advancing. Beating Who one of thought? the top sports <laughs> people in North Dakota. <laughs> Oh, it's right. my personal, it's my best sports moment, certainly, for this month, that's for sure. All right, well, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks for playing, guys. Alex Heinert moves on to the quarterfinals. It will be interesting to see how this bracket plays out over the next week or so. And just want to note, too, that Kelly Stewart has to make these decisions every day, and uh, kudos to her for having to do that. Well, when we come back, we're going to take a look at our live broadcast schedule for the weekend. You're watching Midco Sports Tonight.